Panel, you guys are great. Um, it is so wonderful to be here. It's, it's wonderful to see so many old friends. Uh, those of you, of you who know me know I like to tell the truth. And so when I think about that previous panel, in their previous jobs, I wouldn't have exactly called them friends. They, they sort of gave a bunch of us some grief every now and then, but it was okay. We, we became very friendly over time. Uh, I had the honor of being part of the formation of the CAQ. And so it was very uh, an exciting time for all of us. If you'll indulge me, what I'd like to do is take a brisk walk down memory lane uh, my task is to raise the value of celebration for us in celebrating the 10-year anniversary. But frankly, the whole day is about celebration. So if you think back to the late 90s, in the late 90s, the CEOs of the Big Five, which sounds kind of funny today to say the words Big Five, but when you think about the late 90s, the CEOs were not getting together very often. The chimps, the top technical people, continued to meet regularly, but the CEOs were sort of wrestling with different things. They were adopting different strategies. It was a time where there was a lot of debate around whether to keep or exit certain businesses, and so there was a little bit of a falling out. I became named to lead the firm in 2000, 2001 timeframe. We all started trying to get back together as CEOs. Uh, we put our toes in the water, and, and I'm glad we did because it built some trust, because then Enron happened, 2002, and the entire world changed. It was Enron, it was the tragic collapse of Anderson, it was Sox, as they talked about, the formation of the PCAOB, the end of self-regulation. We really needed to work together. So we all started as, at that time, the big four CEOs working, and we realized a few things. First, we needed to celebrate the profession. Because as that panel said, one of the things we were all worried about is would young men and women want to join the profession when we had just shown that we weren't doing our jobs as well as we should be doing them. Very important that we celebrated the profession. Very important that we listened and learned and evolved because the expectations of stakeholders were changing dramatically. And it was really important that we figured out how to, how to get our voice back. At that time, every one of us was sort of hunkered down. The world had just changed. We were all worried that if we raised our head to say something, someone might shoot it off, quite literally. And so, in the early white papers talking about the formation of what became the CAQ, I think that, as I recall it, they actually referred to it as the voice. Now, fortunately, that became a TV show later, and you know, so this is real reality, not reality TV. But so we started working together, and we wrestled with a lot of very tough questions. We knew that we needed to be more inclusive within the profession. We needed to make sure that the whole profession was engaged, and, but trying to figure out who and how and would it be complicated. A lot of debate. We knew we needed to be more inclusive outside the profession, but lots of discussions around what voices should be heard. Could we even attract others to join with us? Would we listen? Could we really be effective engaging that way? What if it didn't work? What if we got a bunch of outsiders to join us in the CAQ and they all got really upset and had a noisy resignation? What would that do to us? And what risks would we be taking? So we wrestled through all those issues. And, and you know, one thing about celebration, celebration is a lot of fun but it's also about being grateful and thankful for what has been accomplished. And as we wrestled through those issues, I want to tell you, I am very grateful that we expanded the entire profession. If you think about what's happened, I just enjoyed thoroughly working with Ed, working with the leader, also BDO, the other firms. We owe a huge 
debt of gratitude and, and thanks to Barry Melanson for what he's done with the AICPA and for bringing the AICPA together with the CAQ and representing the entirety of the profession. Frankly, I'm very glad one of the things we wrestled with a lot is should the CAQ start as a U.S. organization or we should, should we launch it globally? I'm very thankful we decided the U.S. because had we picked global, you heard the, the panel previously talk about complexity, I think we wouldn't be celebrating the 10-year anniversary today, we'd be celebrating the launch if we, if we decided to do this globally. I am so grateful that we went very inclusive in our outreach to others to really be part of this. We decided on, as you know very well, investor representation, academic representation, audit committee representation, and the three initial outside members are spectacular. There's nobody better than Michelle Hooper. There's nobody better than Lynn Payne. Lynn, are you here somewhere? She's, here. She's not. And, and God rest his soul, Harvey Goldschmidt, spectacular people. And they just made such a difference for all of us. We owe them a great debt. But celebrating 10 years is also about pointing to the people that really made it work. And it was the staff of the CAQ. Nobody more than this lady right here, Cindy Fornelli. <laughs> Some of us, some of us in this, this room are old enough to remember that TV commercial way back when they're launching a new cereal. I think it was Life cereal, and, and people are kids sitting around. What's this going to taste like? Well, give it to Mikey. He'll eat anything. You know, for us it became give it to Cindy. She can do anything. And so, Cindy, thank you. It was fabulous. With that, let me turn things over. Ken, you're next. <laughs> 